Now I'm making this video in response to those who hate the doctrine of election. Okay, to those who would profess Christ yet have a problem with the doctrine of election. The one thing we need to understand, and this is the chief thing, none of us deserve grace. Okay, we've all sinned and the only thing we deserve and the only thing we've contributed to our salvation is sin. And that sin justly deserves the wrath of God in hell for all eternity. So it's the, oh Lord, give me what I do not deserve and keep from me what I rightly deserve. Now, what these people who attack Calvinism need to understand is God in his love and mercy decided to choose. He decided in his love to choose some when he should have condemned us all to hell. Now, the funny thing about professing Christians who hate the doctrine of election is if you are a Christian, right? You, are, you claim to be a Christian. You are a Christian. Then what did that mean? You are elect and that the grace of God abides in you. Isn't that what that means? If that's what that means, why are you mad? Why do you have a problem that you were chosen? Now, imagine this. Let me paint a picture for you. Let's say a man plays a lottery. That's what he's been doing his whole life. He plays a lottery. And let's say he finally hits and he wins the lottery for $100 million. Now, on the day that he, he, received, he, he notices that he wins, he reads the numbers and he wins, he's upset. He's upset that he won. Instead of rejoicing, he, he starts to question and say, why didn't my neighbor win? Why did I, why did I win? What, what was this about? Why didn't my neighbor win? That sounds absolutely ridiculous. He won, yet he's upset. But that's the same thing that you see in these professing Christians who have a problem with election. If you are a Christian, you've won the lottery of life, yet you're upset, you're mad that the doctrine of election is true, it's biblical. You're, you have a problem with that? You see, at the heart of it, the real reason these people hate Calvinism and the doctrine of election is because if God's love isn't universal, then that means it comes with stipulations. And those stipulations will cost you and require change. But if God's love is for everyone in a universal sense, then we can just be happy and be as we are. That's why they hate it. Because if 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 it makes see that at the heart of it, it makes Jesus Lord of their life. OK, and that requires repentance. See, what you find in these people is they want to do everything to take away the lordship of Jesus Christ. They they'll accept the fact that Jesus is God. But then they have a problem with what he demands on their life. And so this is why they attack the doctrines of grace and, and, and election and, and predestination, because, um, because it, it really, at the heart of it, attacks the sovereignty of God. And that's really what it is. And now I want to go ahead and play a clip in which R.C. Sproul, the great R.C. Sproul, uh, responds to a question that deals with the same topic. Uh, my, my question is distilling. Uh, is that grace available to everyone, then, God's help to be saved? You mean regenerative grace? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. You know, that's what, that's what uh, the whole point is, that God is not obligated to give saving grace to anybody. And he sovereignly determines to, be, to have mercy upon whom he will have mercy. And that is his prerogative. When Paul deals with this doctrine in Romans, and he's anticipating the objections that people raise, you know, like, that's not fair. God is not being righteous by not giving everybody uh, the same uh, amount of grace. God's not an equal opportunity redeemer. How can that be? And then he has to remind them what God told them through Moses. I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy. God owes me no grace whatsoever. That's the whole doctrine of election in a nutshell. 